has really uh, taken over the subjectiveness of the experience in a sense and has us as the one, as the subject, yeah, it's what they call self. Uh, it's a trippy, uh, the diagnosis is, you know, isn't to that which claims to hear the diagnosis. It's hopefully about that which claims to hear the diagnosis. If you can see that a little, yeah. So you, people still believe they're coming here and they're still thinking they're going to get something, but the, uh, the message isn't for us, really. It's for what we are. Yeah, to inform it about what we're not. So with the disease of alcoholism, it's tricky because, again, it's this is a subjective experience and it's placing itself as the subject. <laughs> so you're going to get an interpretation of life from the view of self. And when self goes a little bit uh, too far, then you see the examples of addiction, like uh, drugs and alcohol. And in a weird way, it really reveals the finiteness of that idea of self, which is more difficult to see if you're alone and going on and nothing seems to really be uh, demanding any attention. So when you have a really crazy life, hopefully it brings about a recognition of what has been driving it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, because the this movement of selfing will overplay its hand every time. If it has a big pot at the poker, it's going to fucking, <laughs> it's going to lose every chip. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. So if you want today, wherever we are, Kathy, Kathleen, we'll just start, right? It's just not an AA meeting, just to be clear. It's a, uh, I just start riffing a little. And then uh, we'll see where it goes. The platform is really rooted in the idea of having a sense of the exact nature of the wrong not as the exact nature of the wrong. <laughs> Having a sense of the exact nature of the wrong is usually masquerading as the one who's trying to get a sense of the exact nature of the wrong. Yeah. So Dracula loves to go on vampire hunts, just digs it. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll talk all day about vampires <laughs> to anyone who's willing to listen. Uh, so remember, if you don't know what a subjective experience is, uh, does your day give you meaning or you, or do you give meaning to the day? Just broadly, I would say it's the latter. Yes. There's a meaning being given to the day. The day provides the events but the meaning that the day gives us is basically the meaning we give it. Yeah. So that you would call a subjective experience. Now, if the subjective experience is being had any by, by ha being had by anything, it would probably be the subject. Yes. <laughs> Just to follow the ABC of this illustrated pamphlet. Yeah. So <laughs> The subject would be directing the interpretation of the subjective experience. Yeah. Not the object, though, in case is we're mixed up. We think the object is the subject. But hey, that's. Uh... So the subject is is where the infection of self, the selfing is, you know, the disease resides in the mind. Well, that's where the subjective experience is, yes? Your elbow is not having a subjective experience. It's having an experience, and then you call it your elbow, yeah? And so that's where the meaning comes from.
So when they say any life run on self-will can hardly be a success, that's all, sort of be, could be said any life interpreted by self is probably gonna, not going to be a success. Yes? Why? Because it's interpreted by this idea of self, which is very small, very defined, has a lot of blind spots, but won't admit them usually. Yeah. It's basically a failed system and you could choke it almost to the point of death and it would still think it could, if it stopped choking it, it could manage better. Really. <laughs> it's just, uh, they realized it in, in our community when they said self can't get out of self because obviously they finally saw that that was what was happening. Self was trying to get out of self through recovery. Just like self was trying to get out of self through watching Die Hard 8 or eating, overeating a popcorn bag or whatever. Yeah. Self has been trying to get out of self most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes it's subdued based on uh, social parameters, but usually when it's alone, it's doing some shit. <laughs> I think porno isn't a collective or a community event, is it? No. I think most people view porno alone, I would think. Yeah. I'm not a porno expert, but I don't think you would invite people over like you would to watch the Euro Cup. Yeah. <laughs> Yet, if you want to be assured to have a successful business, have it about sex or porno. Yeah. It's probably going to get more hits than anything else. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, our head is like a little porno theater. And instead of Debbie doing Dallas, it's <laughs> we're getting screwed. Yeah. <laughs> uh so if it's a subjective experience and you've had enough of a subjective experience coming from the point of view of self, well, perhaps there's a better way. What's that better way in recovery? Trusting the infinite, yeah? Or trying to stay tuned to the station K infinite instead of finite self, yeah? That's the better way, but what happens if you don't know that you're something other than finite self? Then your approach to trusting the infinite would really be trusting finite self, yes? Because you would attempt to, to trust the infinite as finite self. Isn't that trusting finite self? This is, I think, what some people in the community recognize. They realize self can't get out of self because they, they were observing just that, yeah? And for some great illumination, they weren't calling self the observer of it, yeah? They felt there was something other than self there that was observing self and, and observing self trying to get out of self. And they sent, they left this in our community as a warning, yes? Just like the Herbert Spencer thing in the book is a warning, which is, you know, contempt prior to investigation, because they knew that's exactly what the head does. Yeah. Well, a further addition, the living of the program, people that were doing that came to a conclusion, self can't get out of self. What do you think that means? Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Because it may be describing something you, you're doing right now. What? Yeah, could be. Yeah. When self is trying to get out of self, guess what? You don't think so. <laughs> that's, it. that's part of the dilemma. Just like, doesn't it seem surprising that if you're being taken over by this horrendous disease, you're usually the last one to know? Isn't that, does it really? I mean, if alcoholism like ate your skin and you were walking around with a short shirt, you know, short sleeve t-shirt, everyone would fucking see your skin falling off. 
but you would probably be the last one. That's strange, eh? Doesn't that incite some curiosity? Wait a minute. Or it says, you know, this person is going to be self, super self-centered, but they don't think so. That's the disease. Yes? That's not like a random phenomena. That's a pattern. The disease wants you to be out to lunch. So it can feed, it can eat you for lunch. Yeah, basically. It wants you to be out of lunch because you're its lunch. Yeah. It doesn't have a life but through us. Have you ever seen some people? I started my sobriety in the Haight-Ashbury. We were just there last night in San Francisco. I lived there for the first six years of sobriety. A hotbed of, of uh, prospective customers for AA. <laughs> and I used to see... You know, there'd be a lot of street people and some of them would stand out, maybe because their age, they were a little older. And then I would go back. I'm now 36 years sober. I'd go back and I would see the same people that were just drinking every day, living on the street, surviving because they're so toxic. They don't get flus or viruses, probably wouldn't get uh, COVID if people really wanted not to get COVID, be a fucking complete alcoholic. Your body is so toxic, something doesn't want to take you over. <laughs> Did you ever have a flu when you were getting loaded? I don't remember. I don't remember taking off 10 days to rest and recover. I don't. I don't remember any sick days off when it came with active addiction and alcoholism. There was no sick days off. <laughs> yeah. So even these things don't want to come in. Yeah. So it'd be surprised that these folks were still alive after 25 years at this, like at the same corner of hate street. Yeah. It's mind boggling. They probably were moved by the city. They're probably thriving somewhere else. So something, the exact nature of the wrong is that it's foreign to us. Yeah. If you want to look at it as a flu, it's it's like a flu that comes along with a narration which tells the person ill that it's the flu. Yeah. And now you're living as if you're the flu for the last 30 something years. And instead of taking flu medicine, you're taking other medicine like painkillers, alcohol, fucking drugs. But basically, you're trying to get over an illness as the illness. Could you imagine 30 years of a flu? Wow. Yeah. And everything you take is for the flu, not for you. <laughs> uh, you, you be, you're like catering. You're presenting gourmet meals and drinks and everything for the flu. Yeah. So one day, about six or seven years into sobriety, I had gone through the sincere stage and I gotten established in some conditions. Yeah, like it says in the third step, sincerely taking this position will lead you to be established in that position. Of what? Of relying on something greater than self to the best of your ability at that time. Yeah, so I had gone through those phases and I was sort of established I was in the habit of being sober. Uh, yeah, I was. I that, that urge or that radioactive isotope of wanting to escape had been put to a different use. Yeah, I was somewhat free from, from uh, that preoccupation day at a time. So I was reading how it works. Why? Because it's how it works. Yeah. And I had a position to share a fourth step workshop in San Francisco before Aaron. Uh, the St. John's Church was the next step after I left this place, the dry dock. And I was reading the book because I was going to lead fourth step workshops. So reading a sentence I'd seen many times before, 60, page 64. And this time 
something happened. So being convinced, now I had been, that had been beaten into my head when I was new, that the beginning steps, the requirement is being convinced. Yeah, step one, be, being convinced. Step two, coming to believe something. Step three, that's being convinced. So here it was again, being convinced. And then, so it's important, yeah. Self, all right, they use it a lot. People think it's the ego and stuff, but I'm going to share with you that I don't believe that. I believe there's something that says it has an ego or wants to lose an ego. I would say that's the sense of self. The sense of self is ownership and the ego is owned just like everything else is, being the doer, the seer, the feeler. Now you believe you have an ego. Yeah, maybe it's not so great, or whatever, but it's yours. Yeah, I'm quite. I'm looking at that as the selfing, that ownership. Yeah. All right. So being convinced self manifested in various ways. Wow. All right. So something has defeated me through its manifestations. It's sort of like somebody stabbed me thirty times with thirty different knives, so to speak. Yeah. Only one, only one thing stabbed me, but it used 30 different knives. So self stabbed me through its manifestations. Yeah. All right. If you're convinced of that, this has been your defeat and will be your defeat. Self defeating us through its manifestations. Where? In someone in Idaho when I'm in San Francisco? No. It's manifestations in what? In our subjective life. Why? How? Because it's playing the role of the subject. Hmm. All right. Being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. We are now going to look at its, and to me in English, its means self, the thing that, it, that we're talking about. It, it does not mean us, it means that. So, and remember, it has defeated us. So we're not self, obviously. Yeah. So self has defeated us, so it's foreign to us. Hallelujah, that's good news. Because how it defeats us is it's not foreign to us, it's us, yeah? <laughs> that's insane. And then what we truly are seems foreign to us. So exotic, we call it a spiritual experience. But it's just recognizing we're not a mental invention. Truly, all right? So... What are we going to do? We're going to look at some of its common manifestations. We're not going to go through the A and Z of it all. Yeah, you can get to that later if you want. But let's let's hit the big ones. Resentment, number one offender, kills more alcohol than anything else. What? Yeah. Did not say my, our resentments. It said resentment. Yeah. Not my resentment, not our resentment, but a manifestation of self. Wow. All right. Fear. And we can talk about fear quite a lot. But most of what we're calling fear today is mental anxiety. Yeah. Fear is an emotion that usually is triggered when there's an apparent threat. Yes. Fear is not an emotion that plays without being strummed by mental anxiety. It only plays when it's needed, like when there's an apparent threat to either take flight or to fight. Yes? Fear. That's the emotion. Very valuable. But what happens if the mental state is strumming that instrument of fear and playing the song of fear and using fear for a whole lot of nefarious things other than helping you take flight or fight, yes? It's using fear through mental anxiety to control you, yeah? Just like on a massive scale, they've realized if you keep a massive amount of people in fear, you can control them, yes? Fear, debt, whatever these things, they're an ability to control. Well, the head is just the same thing as the collective in a certain way. And so fear 
mental anxiety is used, in other words, to control us, yeah? So you can even hear it with people who are 30 years sober. They'll share like the super bright light of the spirit, but they'll usually bookend it with, I'm still fucked up, yes? I'm still fucked up, yeah? So there's, they, there's still a tithing to this thing that plays God with the hopes that its big foot won't step on us. It doesn't have a big foot. It's like the Wizard of Oz. It wears like size five. It makes a lot of noise, but it doesn't have a big foot. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so what is the inventory process? The inventory process can be seen very clearly as this. We are going to inventory the common manifestations of self that have appeared in our life. Yeah? Joe and Charlie helped us with the big book seminars. They can even print them out, a four-column inventory that starts with the person, the place, or the thing, what they did or what they should have done they didn't do or whatever that caused you to be resentful. What really was triggered was your fear of losing what you have or not getting what you want, which is the agenda of the social, emotional, security you know, material, sexual instincts. And then fourth column is to see what your role in things. Yeah. To the point where you completely forget the first column's role and you see your role in things. Yeah. Incredibly great introductory inventory. What happens if maybe you should do it again and maybe see how self-defeated you instead of seeing your role in things? Because I bet you when you see your role in things, you're going to see self's role in things. I do. If you have the simple understanding, which we're offering here, every freaking week for two days a week, we give you these glasses. You never have to return them. Just fucking use them, hopefully. I don't even care if you use them or not. The whole point here is just to be a dispensary. I'm not to follow the fucking outcome. Yeah, we're dispensing an understanding with the hopes that it brings you some relief from the seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. That's all. That's that's the agenda, really. Yeah. So. OK, look at your role in things. Where was I? And then listen to the words they use. Where was I selfish? No, where was I selfish, self-seeking and frightened? You just you just stated the culprit's name. You know, like in the, you know, the possession movies, the, the last thing or the first thing you're supposed to do is name the demon. Well, we just fucking named the demon. Selfish, self-seeking, or frightened. The first two have it, its name. I mean, how much harder can you make it? It's so easy to recognize what has defeated you. The first two qualities that you exhibited were selves. And then it says inconsiderate and dishonest, which are what? Attributes of self-centeredness, self-seeking and frightened. Yes. So when you've done your when you look at your role, what is the what does the uh description of the inventory show you? Self's role, yeah. How are we missing it? I don't understand. How can we read self's manifestations, and then the next five minutes later, we call them my manifestations. Wouldn't that be construed as the bondage of self? I'm bound to self's manifestations because I keep calling them my manifestations. That's bondage, yes? That's not the natural condition. That's bondage. And this is what they're asking, you know, the third step. Please relieve us from the bondage of self. It doesn't say, say please relieve of, of ourselves bondage. No, the bondage of self. This idea is singular. Has finite manifestations. It has patterns. And if you look at an inventory, you're going to see its patterns of how it deals with life. If it thinks something is important, you're going to see its manifestations around that. If it believes it has to have money at 
all things, you're going to have a, probably a lot of fear and resentments concern around money. Yeah. If you want to have pride and have everyone th think of you in a certain high lofty way. Yeah. Then you're going to see where resentments and fear are, are surround that topic. Because whatever self deems important, that's where it shits. Yeah. And I, if you say this shit is like gold bullion, yet it's surrounded by flies, you're mistaken. It's shit. Yeah. Just follow the flies. If the flies are there, the shit's there. Flies don't get fucking distracted. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how, no shit here, no shit here, the flies are going to still be there. Yeah. So in this case, you've now done an inventory and in, instead of letting it stop at your role in things, you've made you've taken it to another level, which is see self's role in things. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember, the book was written. The longest sobriety that people had was most four years. Four years. This this answer, this solution has been around for 70 something years now. Yeah. And doesn't it say in the vision for us, this power is going to constantly reveal to us shit. Yeah. And people are, who are going to come after are going to add on to it. Well, yeah. Let's not spec let's not particulate the person, but let's take, let's look at the message. Yeah. Maybe there's another, maybe when you start seeing what has defeated you in step four, it may lead to another wave of recovery that they hadn't seen when they were seeing the sets of recovery breaking on this new shore for four years, yeah? Maybe it's like when you're surfing, you go there and you watch and then sets come in and there's usually a, a period between the sets. Sometimes the sets come in like three at a time, very, very short period. Some two at a time, and then there's about a couple of minutes, and then a big one shows up. Well, this is what happened. Maybe there's been a revelation concerning the exact nature of the wrong that they weren't super clear about at that time. Yes? Yeah. So here you are. It's right in the book. Try it. Do an inventory, a short one, and take the word my out of it and see how it goes. Yeah. And stop calling self's manifestations yours, please. That's not hard, is it? So how you can get into the habit of it. Just catch it. Catch your nonchalant way when a resentment is mentioned or something it's yours or it's the other person's. You see the ownership of it? That ownership is killing people. That ownership is prolonging a state of bondage to the point where some people, their whole life is based on a resentment about something that actually never even happened. They're, they're fucking, their life is, is fueling and irrigating and fucking giving miracle grow to this resentment because it's called them. Yeah. Have you ever seen a wild a resentment in the wild that that lived for 60 fucking years? No. Have you were you angry for 60 years after that person cut you off and on the fucking highway 101? No, obviously. Maybe how long did it last? If you didn't do anything, maybe one or two exits. If you did something, it could have been a prison sentence could have been added onto it. Yeah. This is the joy of the Mai. The Mai wants you to act out. Yeah. It doesn't just want to drive you crazy. It wants you to get fucked out there for some of us. I was a consequential type. So I, when I meet certain people, I know they're a consequential type. Man, you got to take shelter because you're going to get whacked. Yeah. And I realized that I was willing to pay any consequence tomorrow not to feel uncomfortable now. But then when I got run over twice by a car, 
I realized, man, I had no idea what kind of consequence could come up. Yeah, none at all. 28 years old, I had no fucking clue of a long lasting effect. Yeah. Did that sober me up? No. But has it made me sober since? Yes. Yeah. So you may have a slap on your wrist and then one time you're going to have a fucking safe drop on your head. Yeah. Because it is truly playing like with Russian roulette. Yeah. So this is all we can really say. We're not changing a step or the traditions or the concepts or the worldview. We're not doing anything. We're just trying to illuminate this path of recovery by illuminating the exact nature of the wrong. Yeah. Now, how to deal with everything is perfectly suited to what we're suffering from. But if what we're suffering from is having a subjective experience about itself being in recovery, it's going to severely limit the effects of recovery. Yeah. Yeah. So this doesn't come out of head. It comes out of observation for 36 years. When I hear people still have an umbilical cord connected to them right now to an incident that they believe they did while loaded 37 years ago, and there's been no fucking forgiveness or relief, that is not attractive to me. It isn't. So when they pontificate and they go off, I could care less because I can see these umbilical cords connected to being the doer. Yes? Of shit they had nothing fucking to do with other than being the form of transportation. I think it's way past due that we render unto the lower power what was the lower power as we so easily seem to render over to the higher power what is of the higher power. If you can render to the higher power gratitude and honor, you can also render to the lower power what it deserves. I don't see how this is so off, yeah? That we can constantly say, God is doing for me what I can't do for myself, but we don't see that something did through us what we never would have done by ourselves. I do not believe that is a phenomena. I believe it's a manufactured blindness by the infection, by the parasite in the host. That's exactly what I believe it is. I believe the parasite will allow you to give all credit to the higher power, but will never take the blame for the demise that you suffered. Yeah? Yeah. You give me a better idea why, then maybe I'll listen. I haven't heard any in 30-something years now. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, Kathleen, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everybody. Just remind you that, you that it's not an AA meeting. And if anybody wants to make a comment or have a question for Paul, you can raise your virtual hand. And Paul, I was just going to read this one paragraph because you reminded me of it. It's on page 164 in uh, the last page of um, the text. Yeah. It says, our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little. God will constantly disclose more to you and to us. Ask him in your morning meditation what you can do each day for the man who is still sick. The answers will come if your own house is in order. But obviously you cannot transmit something you haven't got. See to it that your relationship with him is rightened. Uh, this this is a great fact for us. Yes, that's all. I just wanted to read that little bit. I have one thing I don't I don't agree with. I don't believe you have to have it to give it away. I believe if you're willing to give it away, you'll have it. Well, good. I'm glad I read it so you could clarify that for us. Thank you. Well, that's just my opinion through observation, because then people 
are going to keep asking that which is defeating you, do you have it to give it away? No, you yeah. are it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The head. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I've done, we've done it as best we can. We've put it out there. Anyway, it's really just the first part that was important that I was reading, you know, that um, the part that I had highlighted is our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little, period. Right there. Yes, yes. Yes. Have you seen the... Uh... It would be nice to have a new spin on the solution because of the the uh, the overactive expression of all these addictions going on. Yeah. And they're being fueled now by technology. You can have your own uh, Narcissus pond in your hand. Just keep looking at images of you and others. It's insane. It is. And watch the infinite scroll. Tons of flashes. You're not getting anything. Yeah. I don't think anyone's ever followed one of those recipes they've looked at with 800,000 things going down. Probably not. Yeah. Oh, that looks, oh, that looks, oh, this is the, supposedly they say uh, the American people have the, the, uh, what is that? The attention span of a rabbit. That's incredible. Insane. That's insane to me. Yeah. If your attention just flits and flits and flits, how are you going to attend to that which doesn't flit and flit and flit? Your inherent nature, the ever-present availability of what we are. If we're just hitting a shutter just to send light to the head all day. Yeah. Don't you think that is self having a subjective experience? And then you end part of that is you we feel so unique. But then when you meet up in a room with like people who have suffered the extreme addiction of alcoholism and drugs, it's so funny how everyone seems to have the same thoughts and the same feelings and the same reactions to what you call your unique life and they call their unique life. I mean, when do we, when does the exclamation point or the dullness, why does, when does that turn into a question mark? You know, when they say about millions of us and then we end up at the three, same three parking spaces, what do you, what is that just fucking lady luck or some weird thing? No, we have one driver driving millions of us and it likes to have us end up in three parking spaces. Yeah. Now it leaves and now we're, our car is dead in the parking space, institution, jails and death. One of them literally dead. The other two sort of like a, a live death sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So my nephew hit me once. He's now doing somewhat all right. But he called me up just a couple months ago, and he was revisiting a rehab he had been in 25 years earlier. This blew my mind, blew my mind. Yeah, that his life had gotten so thing. He was now revisiting all these moons of of selfing you know fuck shit hmm. i get a call from people this one guy i really love i met him when i was 21 years sober my the day i got sober was the day he was born yeah so it was cool he was 21 I'm now 36, and he's still in and out for 16 years. I got a call, and it's almost like a ping from an old buoy lost at sea, and I didn't hear anything. 
for months now. Yeah. Just every once in a while, a ping. And uh, unbelievable, you know. There's, there's something going on that need, needs some serious attention to have it pointed out. Yeah. Now they're all combining stuff, like trying to take, and I have no problem with it, except how it would affect you, your relationship to others in the program. But people with the ayahuasca and all this, they're apt to do almost anything to try to get relief. And it doesn't seem to work, you know? Yeah. Because the stubbornness of you wanting to be there to get it, where the program is losing interest in the you. Yeah. That's the whole point. Is losing interest in self. Yeah. Self doesn't see that as a winner. Yeah. You know, being the one who breaks through the, the curtain of obscurity and flashes like a newborn sun, self's into that, definitely. But if you are what you were looking for right now, it's not into that. It's, it's, it finds very little interest in that. Yeah. But becoming something, it will sign up for that. Yeah. But being something, no. Because it has that job already taken. It's being something called Paul and you and Mary and Jim. Yeah. It's busy being that. It's in the business of unbecoming and becoming, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But don't touch that beingness. No fucking way. Yeah. So, yeah, I love I love recovery. It, this was a hopeless state of mind and body I seemed to be in. And I had given up hope it was ever going to change. I d really did. I was just moping around on the bottom trying to stay obliviated until I had to end up in institution or jail or death. And then something decided uh, that was going to change. Yeah, I was the fucking most surprised of anyone. And then Whammo got whacked. And now uh, it knew probably that whack would have been drowned the next day or two. So life conspired to bring me to my first meeting that night. So I got whacked in the early, uh, like late morning. And that night I was at an AA meeting in San Francisco, a men's meeting. The lady who took me there dropped me off and she came back and picked me up, which was amazing. And there it went, started the ball rolling. So the miracle could have been forgotten in the two days, as extended for 36 years by the grace that I found and we can find in this program. Yeah. You don't even have to find it. It'll find you. Just guess, stay in the program. Stay in the program. You're going to meet grace. You, are. you don't have to look for it. You're going to meet it. There's tons of it here. I've seen people's whole life based on getting sober. Wives, kids, jobs, houses, cars, everything. Every fucking thing. If you look closely, it has a little tattoo made in sobriety man amazing it's amazing it is yeah where's the grace <laughs> yeah all right well thanks so um paul mike m has his hand his virtual hand raised hey mike thanks paul as always um I was thinking about something my uncle Lou used to say to me when I was a little punk ass fucking kid in Long Island. I'd complain about stuff and he'd be like, oh, it is what it is. I get so angry because that's, he would just continue saying that. And he was sober and he had this kind of neutral attitude towards shit. Whether he was faking it or not, it doesn't matter. And that, as I approach 60, makes more sense than ever that it is what it is. And there's nothing I can do to stop it, change it. And that took years of coming in and out of the program and using a lot of 
workshop technique to get out of this thing. Some workshops said, well, you're suffering from alcoholism, ego, and self. So those are the three things you got to get out of. And I'm like, and you know, they said it like you treat this by doing this. And I think all of this has value. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I, but I know for a fact, as I sit here with you, that I didn't have the power to do anything else but to use self to try to get out of alcoholism, ego, and self. And that is a spiritually, that's a revelatory spiritual experience that, that I, I couldn't have had on my own without doing everything I could do to see that there was nothing I could do. Like, that's really what this came down to. Um, and this message of non-duality has helped me to work with people in a little bit of a different way, like following the book, obviously, but pointing out where it says self. You know, when it talks about Jim's story, when it talks about the whiskey and the milk and the problematic thinking that precedes the first drink or the problematic thing that precedes the first thought. Um, so I just really, really appreciate you, man, because I don't know. I heard somebody share on one of the meetings like, well, this is all good, but, you know, you still have to have fun. This is fun, Paul, right here with you guys there's a level of fun to this and there was a lot of misery here for the first year or two that i was on this meeting but it didn't have to do with this it had to do with the idea that i was going to use this as my new parlor trick to get the fuck out of self so i commend this group hanging in here and kind of taking it's not revolutionary right because non-duality has been around for millennia obviously or longer it's just an approach that I can't unhear or unsee anymore. And you said that a long time ago. This is kind of the last stop. And it is. It's the last stop of no stops. <laughs> right? So I dig it, man. I'm very grateful for you, for the, for the instrument in you that strums these beautiful chords of reality, man. And keep doing what you do. Love you guys. Everybody have a great week. Thank you, Mike. Hey, you know, uh, the writer for that movie, The Irishman, he used to end up constantly. It is what it is after they killed somebody. It is what, hey, it is what it is. The other guy go, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that logic had a very short life, shelf life. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you, man. Anyone else? Thank you, Mike. I don't see any other. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. This is like the best hour and a half of my day so far. So even it hasn't even been an hour and a half yet. That's and pretty... get, yeah, getting ready, like getting you know finding out it was time to get going. And all that. Yeah. It's fun yeah. Too. yeah. It's fun just, just fun, just waking up in the morning and living life. Just. I'm personally having a blast. Yes. Well, you know, I think, uh, Kathleen, it's good to find out if your model of, of an action figure runs better on purpose or with purpose than without. Yeah. It's an important thing to recognize. It's sort of like you're giving it fuel, but is it running well, the fuel? Well, in this case, Service wasn't an option. It was a necessity. Yeah. It's just because it gives a fulfillment to the action figure that a lot of things doesn't do. Yeah. But uh, you know when the cow is content, you do. You do. I mean, I know when the cow is content. I know when it's upset with something. And then you try to, your head never usually has a good diagnosis but service was a great diagnosis for me. And then the purpose of, of uh, you know, staying sober and help others to achieve sobriety. It's fucking great. Yeah. Gives yeah. meaning to life. See? And so if your head is giving meaning to life, uh, you got to introduce new meaning into that stream. And this is what recovery does. It introduces us to the we what we look at, what we can contribute to life, all of these effects that happen 
when there's a loss of interest in self. Yeah. And then other meetings that actually are much more suited for fulfilling and 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 assisting in the satisfaction and contentment of the action figure of the car are found. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, there's not much debate. When you find something works, just let keep working it until you find something else that works. Yeah. And usually you get an upgrade, don't you? You do. So doing service com becomes being of service. That's an upgrade. Yeah. You know, doing this and doing that, getting into the habit of being sober is an upgrade. So now the problem, I mean, this, the solution isn't, doesn't have any thoughts involved in it, which is where the problem resides. So that's an upgrade. So the, we keep getting upgrades. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the idea of practicing these principles in all your affairs, you may realize you have to limit some affairs because you're in, unable to do that yet. Yeah. Doesn't mean like forever. It just means right now, hey, it would be wise to limit your affairs. Great. Okay. Some people, they got to go into a program because they need a constructed limiting their affairs. <laughs> Because the head's having a field day. you got to take the bat and ball away from it and go into a program. Then, you know, usually you can tell if you're working with people. Hey, I think you, you know, you need to be assisted forcefully for a little while. Have you ever considered going into something? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're outmatched, right? That's why you rely on other people. Because this head won't tell you you're outmatched. Yeah, so you can listen to someone else that sees you're definitely outmatched, and hey, chill out. Restraint of pen and tongue. Don't fucking get in touch with the person right now. Just you're in. You're just ingested an anger pill. Don't start fucking. Uh, yeah, communicate. These things you learn, don't you? Yeah, and. What was applied to you can be applied to others because we're suffering from the same ailment or occupation, a foreign occupation. Yeah. So you grow in confidence. Hey, if this works for me, it probably will work for you because it isn't about the different you and me. It's about the similarity of what has defeated us. Yeah. So, yeah, let's. Uh, and then, you know, as you're sober, people come up with other things for you, like your bunions or your arthritis and there's a lot of source of getting relief a lot of ways because these people are in the practice of getting relief for 40 years yeah i mean to me when you were traveling the greatest source resource was an AA meeting because they knew everything they knew where to eat you know, like that you were plugged in immediately just going to AA almost in any country you ever went to yeah what an incredible thing. It's sort of like having a universal plug you can jack into. Not like Apple. Every year they try to change the plug. You got to buy a new one. You know, just plug in. Yeah. Incredible, eh? Ah, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Maybe that's not you talking, literally. Maybe it's not. Yeah. If you look at it wisely... The head doesn't want that, no. The head doesn't want to look at it wisely. It doesn't. It has a bad habit, yeah. It'll eat wisdom up if it has you by the balls. Yeah, well, there is a solution. Isn't that awesome? And there There's... is another hand up too, Paul. All right. Jacob would like to talk to you. Oh, Jacob would like to talk to me. Well, I'd like to talk to Jacob, too. Well, hey, Paul. Uh, right. We had a question in the chat. Um, Aaron Seymour, his connection is a little bad, but he's asked you to tell the rug story. And I was thinking about it, and I, I was thinking, do I know the rug story? Maybe I need oh, a refresher. Oh, you know the rug story. I'm sure I do. All right. Let's hear it. The rug story. What is this, like, request Tuesday? <laughs> yeah. All right. 
the the rug story I use mostly for the other myths meeting, but hey, it works. <clears throat> so this one year, it's a longer story. I'll cut it out. I was on a around the world ticket. Yeah. So like almost halfway through, I ended up in Turkey. Now, uh, I got to Turkey. I was staying in like a guest house, met a couple of people. And so we went to the area where they have these incredible uh, things you can see. One is uh, called the Blue Mosque. It's this huge uh, Muslim temple. And then there's a play thing called the Sophia, which I'll tell you about. It's incredible. So we were walking around that and a, a very nicely dressed guy with like a shark skin suit came up and asked us if he, if he could show us around. Of course, I was suspicious as usual. But he seemed fine. So he took us to the Sophia, had a lot of information and to the Blue Mosque. And then he brought us to this door on this uh, brick wall and he knocked on the door and it answered. And a guy looking very similar to him was there. And he just passed us like a baton to this other guy. And I never saw the first guy again. And the other guy greeted us with Turkish coffee and apple juice and brought us into a rug emporium. Yeah. And these people were, they had in fucking oriental rugs up the wazoo, incredibly beautiful, did a whole giant production of presenting them. But I was sitting there with a clear understanding. I had no floor, F-L-O-O-R. Yeah. I didn't have a place to live. So therefore, me buying a rug while traveling made absolutely no sense. Yes? Now, this doesn't matter if you're an addict or alcoholic. But at this point, I was sober. Yeah. So it does matter. So they went out. They start spinning the rug and everything. Went on for hours. Mr. Paul, do you want some coffee? No, I'll go apple juice. And there was no way I was going to buy a rug because I had no place to put it. So then they started to realize this. And they go, listen, we could, we could uh, bend this rug so we can put it in your backpack. I go, no, I'm not going to go to Thailand with an oriental rug. You know, I was just not going to buy it, right? Because I had an immunity. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to recovery because wisdom and all the evidence in the world will not be enough to stop that thing from driving you to do a drink or do a drug, yes? You can know it's the worst possible idea in the world and you may still do it because of the, what has taken us over and actually the location of what has taken us over, which is in the head, yes? Because once again, this is a subjective experience and this disease has itself as the subject of the subjective experience, yeah? So all wisdom and evidence like it says in the big book, self-knowledge avails you nothing, yeah? At a certain point, all the knowledge that you shouldn't drink, you should never drink again, you should never do that, is not going to be sufficient enough, yeah? To stop you from picking up that drink. So this is where the uniqueness of this disease, and you can see how well it travels here, doesn't it? It has branched out into hundreds of things, Spiritual addiction, food addiction, porn addiction, drug addiction, fucking being nice addiction, enabling addiction. Unbelievable, yes? Just fucking spore, just growing, growing, growing. Because what we have relied on, which is reason and understanding, isn't sufficient to stop this, yes? where it was sufficient from stopping me to buy a rug because I was freed from the bondage of self at that point. Yeah. And that wisdom that I knew I had no place to put it overrode all of the temptating temptation of the coffee and the rugs and everything like that. And it could have gone on for hours or years and I would have still had an immunity, but the head is a different beast. Yes. All your knowledge doesn't avail you fucking anything. 
Yeah. So I like the rug thing in non-duality, but here it doesn't really apply. Yeah. Because you know you have nowhere to go and nothing that and it's the worst thing you ever do, and you'll do it anyway. Yes. This is how overriding the disease is because it's overriding the subjective experience presenting itself as the subject of the subjective experience, yeah? And then you become the object of that subjective experience and you get fucked. Yes or no? Haven't you been the object of the subjective experience the head has been having in you? Yeah? I don't see the head with scars from 40 years ago. I don't see the head with a giant arrest record. I don't see a head that can't uh, get a job because it has felony charges. I don't see that. I see it's the object Jacob that has been tattooed by the subjective experience of self. Yes? To the point when you meet people with no tattoos, you know what's actually talking to you is self, not them. Yeah? And they look as an object totally fucking beat up and fucked up. Yeah. Because the subject has been defeating them. Yeah. So. Check it out. Look up subjective experience and see if, it, if you feel what it means. Yeah. Because this is what's going on here. Yeah. This is what... The, the magic of recovery where you may have a belief for years about the worst thing that ever happened to you. And then you come into this program and it changes, not the object, but the subject. And now you see it as the best thing that ever happened to you. What was it? It was neither. Something in you was giving it the meaning. Yeah. Yes. Wouldn't you love to live by different meanings now? The only two possibilities is finite self or the infinite. Now, haven't you had enough of finite self? Wouldn't you like to hear a song played by the infinite? Yeah. Instead of the same old golden oldies that you've been listening to for fucking years? Talk about slavery. Can you imagine? Wouldn't you see a form of slavery if you were watching Die Hard 13? When you know the only Die Hard movie that was good was the first one. But because you're so bored or whatever, you watch it. Isn't that a form of slavery? Yeah. Well, yes. There is a solution. Yeah. See, people rush in, and it's fine. Where I just came back from, all the young guys there, one of the first things they do when they're in this program, they go to the gym. So their object looks totally different. But where is the subject? Yes? This is not an objective experience. It's a subjective experience. The object is going to be the thing that takes the fall for the self-centered subjective experience. Yes? Yeah. Some people have gone too far. Their, their brain is wet now. Yeah? Some people, their mind has gotten incinerated by too much crystal meth. Who are going to watch them the rest of their lives? Yes? They've passed a point of no return. This, and they're not, they're not unique now. Have you, I went, we drove a guy to the city, and I haven't been in this area for a while. In San Francisco, the area is called the Tenderloin. Well, it has grown across Market Street. And we went to this place on this little street called Minna Street, and it was real. It was a segment, an urban segment of uh, 
what was that show that about the zombies? People were frozen in weird positions and time, not moving. Some guy was halfway across the street in a wheelchair with a huge blanket over him. Somebody left him halfway across this little alleyway. The t I was only there for 20 minutes. I did not see any fucking movement in that wheelchair. I looked down the alley. Those people were frozen in a fucking physical posture. Half bent over. What the fuck? Yeah. Do you think the object did that? A subjective fucking experience did that. Mm. I mean, it blew my mind, literally. I hadn't been in there. I haven't been around there for years. And I don't know what they're taking now, but it's as if time stopped. One guy was holding onto a parking lot. I did whatever I did. He hadn't moved in like 15 minutes. Just like still frame. This is somebody's kid. This is somebody's brother or sister. It's fucking mind boggling. Yeah. We're in the lap of Zoom luxury. Yeah. The gratitude I have for what is absence in my life is unbelievable because I know what's possible when taken over by that fucking thing. I have been, I, I had seared memories of, of what it's like. I cannot do the subjective experience justice, but the illustrations are so graphic, it keeps me sober in a way yeah i can't put myself into that hell because it's a subjective hell yeah and it's also a subjective heaven yeah one is the emissary of one and the other is the emissary of the other finite self infinite yeah it's based on how you're leaning or like they say in native indian there's those two wolves in you, and which one's going to grow is the one you feed, yes? Yeah, simple as that. Do you need a fucking esoteric, like, microscope to recognize that? No. It's simple. You'll see it in your own life. So, yeah. I am very, very happy that there is a solution. And I'm very, very happy that you can see the exact nature of the wrong and recognize it's foreign to you. Because if you keep trying to be free as it, that is the bondage of self. You can be free from it because you're not it. That's it. I want to end today, right? Oh, no, we got Aaron one more time. Aaron, I guess Aaron wants to follow up, maybe. All right. All right, I'll, do it. I'll try to be quick, Paul. I'm hoping keeping my video off will improve this. The reason that rug story means so much to me, I, you remember, for the first six months, I just came to non-duality meetings. I didn't get sober until I'd been listening for a long time. And I got sober. I've always said, I could not have heard the message of non-duality without AA. And I couldn't have heard AA without the message of non-duality. I don't know where they crossed over. Anyway, in my early years of sobriety, the way I was able to stay away from drinking was because I told myself that that was a rug for a floor I no longer had. And that's how it, why it, that story means so much to me and how I apply it to recovery. Yeah. Then flash forward today and 10 years sober, 10 plus years sober, and the self manifested in different ways continues to try. It's, it's kind of baffling and powerful. It had it easy when it could just reach for a drink. And before that, drugs. And before that, as a little kid, it was food. But now I've given it a lot more. <laughs> I come to these meetings. We lost you, though. And, um, stuff we lost you, though. That action figure is so We're losing you, Aaron. Very much at action. Um, we lost you. Tiny moments during the day, I have to remind myself that I don't have a floor 
I can't hear you. Kathleen, we should stop. Yeah, I can't hear you. Ari. Just Sounds great though. Oh. <laughs> what I was saying. That was a good one. The last one. Some of these things okay. get in horrible. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. Yeah, that was uh so that last bit was great. It was lovely. I don't know what you said, Aaron, but I feel you. And uh, I was very happy to meet you, and we participated in society together, and that's awesome. What was I saying? Yes. At least many of us, uh, the objectiveness of the beating has stopped, yes? We're not in jail. We're not in this. We're not in that, yeah? And why do you think that gift is? So that you can see the subjectiveness of the nature of the problem, Yeah. There isn't a thing called self. It isn't a thing. Yeah. It's an activity and it is foreign to you. Yeah. That's what worked. And that's why I share it. When I saw it as not me, the possibility of being free from it became available. And then I got a scan of most of my life of trying to be free as self from self. Yeah. Self can't get out of self. So just saw it. It was a nice compact package. Whacked me. Never been the same since. Yeah. But the clarity that it's foreign to me brought about a lot of relief from the past. And the that ownership of being the doer of all that shit I did while under the influence, I do not see myself as the doer of it. It's described very clearly in the book. We were driven by a hundred forms of this shit. We made we did all this shit based on a decision of based on self, meaning not you. Yes. So we have been driven. And if you've driven, you're not the driver. Just to inform you. <laughs> Make it a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> so the drive the driven, the car has never uh gotten a speeding ticket. It was the driver. Now, you've been paying all the fines, yeah, because you think you're the driver. But no, you're the driven. Send those fucking tickets back to where they belong, which is the lower power. Yeah? Yes. Something did through us what we would not do by ourselves. I'm going to say it again. Something did through us what we would not do by ourselves. To me... That's the first movement of the farness of the nature. It acts through us and we get to hold the bad. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you so much. I'm going to start saying goodbye, Kathleen. Aaron, I sorry we missed you. We got to get better Wi-Fi in that garage, maybe. I don't know. We got Kathleen. Yeah, but I got you, bro. I got you. It's the day I met you, don't worry, we're simpatico. Mickey, as always, the matriarch of Madeira, reigning supreme over her little area. Yes? She must be, she may be called the dryness queen now. Yes? Or the, the hot mama, because she's cooking up the people there. Kaiser. Ah, nice to see Kaiser dropped in from all of his very big, important plans and designs. Rico Cruz. Happy you're feeling better, Rico. Yes. Remember, you're a lifetime member and actually past lifetime member of ZenBitSlap.com. Yeah, it, it extends ad infinitum. Yeah, so don't. that's good. There's a lot of benefits you may not know yet. Marl, nice to see you in Canada, uh, California. Upstate Brittany in Washington. Hmm. Jess L. Jess from the, the wee little island called Ireland. 
Don't call it Dublin, it's Dublin. Roman Mula. Oh, we got some of the old people from Italy. They're not old. Roman and Jess. Walter, our, our emissary in the Netherlands. Dono. Dono F. Nice to meet you, Dono. It almost sounds like the, the, Zen, the, very, the Zen mind. Don't know. So if you say it fast, don't know. But it's don't know. Uh, Miak. Miak in her lovely surroundings. Wow. Yeah. There must be a giant pot of gratitude there. Yeah. Axel. Germany. Marilyn. Tallahassee. I know we're gonna have to send you supplies, Marilyn. You're out in the you're out in the outback. We're gonna try to feed you. Yeah, don't worry. We're never gonna let you down. Yes. Joseph C. That's vice versa, Joseph. Yeah. I know you. I hope someday I get to meet you, Joseph. But thank you for always showing up and very happy to know you. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Jeffrey from Seattle, buying and selling ears and eyes and even delivering them for free. Pretty good. John K., formerly known as Jed, Jeb. James Lebowski. Yes. He took a name that I, that I have a great fondness for, Lebowski. Yeah. Zoe Banks. In Arkansas, she's dream she's dreaming of wasabi <laughs> and some good fish, other than catfish. Yes, Miss Volkman, uh, Oliver, our, our emissary in Berlin, Mike M. Thank you, Mike. Trudging the road of happy destiny. Ben, Tom M. Uh, we got Stephanie F. Fletch. Fletch, I'm going to try to call you later. I've been very busy. I'm sorry I haven't got back to you. Uh, listen, everyone, thank you. See you, Kaiser, everybody. We'll be here today at 4.30 Pacific time. I think the schedule's on. The Saturday will be at our house but the Zoom will be at the same time, one o'clock. All right, see you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you, God. Thanks, you love Paul. the service, Kathy.